Hello everybody, thanks for tuning today in this live about STEMs. My name is Elias, I'm from Costa Rica and I'm working in Korea.net as a Spanish language reporter. Today I will be talking about a very interesting subject. So first of all, I will be talking about how and why I get interested in this thing of STEMs. It was in 2017 or so, I was living near the Seoul Central Post Office and I saw a lot of people queuing outside of the Central Post Office building. They told me that they were waiting for the next morning at 9 a.m. for the issue of the Moon Jae-in president stamp that now we can see in the screen. It's this one. So let me talk about this. In Korea, it's the tradition that for every new president, after a new president it takes office, 100 days after that, they issue a stamp, commemorative stamps. And as you can see, there is the tekuki, the Korean flag. And this was the first stamp I saw in, well, in Korea. I guess in your country also they have different stamps, but I'm not sure if in other countries they also issue the stamps for the new presidents. Through Moon Jae-in stamp is like how I started, but now today I'm going to talk about several different stamps. The first stamp I want to talk about my top five stars. But before this, again, thank you for all the people who is joining with us. And today I will be asking different questions, short quizzes through the program. And whoever gets the right answer for the first place, you will be able to win a $30 Amazon gift card. So please participate if you know the answer. Now let's get started. I will be talking first of stamps related to Korea. In the top five, the first place is K-pop. I don't know if you already knew, but they were because they're kind of old. They haven't issued K-pop stamps recently, but uh, like 10 years ago or so, they made several issues for different K-pop stars that were very famous at that time. So as you can see now in the screen, these groups like 2PM, it's been like 10 years and maybe as you know, they're not active or but I'm pretty sure you know. Also, um, we had the Sai from Gangnam Style, some commemorative stamps you can see here. And there were more that I couldn't bring them today, but there were like Xinhua and Big Ben. There is one about girl band. And I would like to make a quiz. If you can guess the name, either in English or in Korean, you will be able to win a $30 Amazon gift card. Can you guess what is the name? And while you guess, I will try to answer the questions that you are asking me now in the live chat. The stamps are not free, but are not expensive either. In Korea, sending a letter, like a regular letter, from any place of Korea to any place of Korea within the country, even to Jeju Island or whatever, it's the same price, it's 381. It's like 30 or 35 cents. So usually like each stamp you saw before, one, not the full sheet, but one of them is like 35 cents of dollar, sorry. These stamps are for Sonyo Shide in Korean, Girls' Generation in English. They were very popular at that time. This is from, if I remember well, like almost more than 10 years ago. The next stamps I want to talk about is Korea, cultural heritage. So after K-pop, Korea's cultural heritage. So let's take a look about Korean culture. The first stamps I would like to show you is about Nam Mang Sang Sung. You will see now in the screen. That is how it looks and this is how it looks in the pa in paper, the real one. Nam Mang Sang Sung in Korean, Sung means fortress in the mountain. So actually Naman Sangsong is a fortress in the mountain and it has been featured in many Korean movies and it is really a very important place for the Korean history. Besides the historical places or buildings, we also have 
stand for the untangible cultural heritage of Korea. Uh, this is the first quiz. Do you know what is the name of this Korean cultural manifestation? This is like a woman from one of Korea's most famous and popular island. They dive, like one minute they go into the ocean, and then they go up and many times to fish. And this is very special. It was, that is why it was declared cultural heritage for UNESCO. Is Jeju divers in English or Henio in Korean. This is about women who die for long intervals and they make a living through this. Now we have one more question. It's about a Korean traditional sport. We can see now in the screen. So this stamp was issued like last year. This sport was declared UNESCO heritage. It's about fighting, it's kind of fighting. And they have a, like a belt in their waist. In these stems, one is red and the other is blue. So the quiz is what is the name of this sport? Usually it's played uh, like over sand and they have like participants from all ages. They're like high school teenagers and also adults. It was very popular since a long time ago, but still this sport is still popular nowadays. Sport name is Shirum in Korean. Okay, so now I would like to ask any of you have watched some of the stamps in your countries in your countries. I am very curious about what do they do stamps in other countries if it's like in Korea about historical things or about like national sports. From the stamps in here in Korea, not all of them are about Korea, of course, but that, today I'm talking about Korean stamps about Korea, but there are also stamps about more generic subjects like animals or just like places. Ah, we have an answer now. and. They said in Mexico they have stamps from or from their cities. Like I, I'm not sure what what cities, but maybe like Mexico City or Guadalajara, like that stamps. And in Peru, somebody from Peru is answering that they have also stamps for historical places like the Machu Picchu. So somebody is telling that in his or her country they do also stamps for important days like the Independence Day. And this is related to the next stamp I want to talk about. It's about Korea's traditional clothes that I'm pretty sure many of you know and maybe you, you have wore when you came to Korea. The next stamp I want to talk about is Hanbok, the Korean traditional clothes. There are two different editions. One is the Hanbok for women, as you can see now in the screen. There is like like this. And we have also an issue for handbook for men. Ah, somebody is asking how to say stamp in Espanol, in Spanish. Uh, as you say, Spanish is spoken in many, many countries. So usually one word is used for all the countries, but sometimes they have different words. In some countries they say estampilla, in some countries they say estampa, in some countries they say sello, like in Spain they say sello. Now let's go on with the Korean handbook stamps. If you pay the attention, there are, I mean, like, there are 16 different stamps in here, but there are only four designs, four different designs, for the men and for the women, same, only four different designs. I will like to make a quiz about this. Why do you think there are four different stamps, four different designs. The right answer is, like he said, four different seasons, kind of, yes. Like, they were made according to centuries. Like, one of the stamps is from the kind of handbook they wore in the 16th century. The other is about the 17th, the 18th, and the 19th century. So, 
it's for centuries, but right about different seasons. Many people also commented like they like hanbok and they would like to wear hanbok. I just remember here in Korea, one of the places where you can wear the hanbok is near the palaces, the royal palaces. This is like the small version and in the screen you are seeing the big version. It's different size, but same, same design, same four palaces. All of these palaces are located in Seoul. We have the Tandokun with the secret garden, a very beautiful place. And we have the Toksukun. And we have the Changyokun also. In Korean, kun means palace, that's why it's at the end. I guess um, if you have traveled to Korea, you have visited at least one of these palaces, right? What is your favorite palace in Korea? And some of the re readers, they're asking also if we still make stamps in Korea. And yes, yes, we do. Um, well, the office, the post office do. Usually they issue like one or two different stamps per month. So it makes like around at least 20, 21 different editions every year. This year, the first issue will be just a few days later, like next week or next, next week. It will be about Korean meteorological satellites. I will be talking about that later. In these four palaces that I just showed you, I told you there is Chandokung, Toksukung, and Changyokung, but there is one more. So what is the other palace? What is the fourth palace? This palace is located just across Gwanghwamun Square and is very, very popular. If you wear hanbok, you can enter for free. If you wear hanbok while you visit the palace, you don't need to pay. Fourth palace was Kyungbukgung, right, Kyungbukgung Palace. The most famous one, right, like Panda, Panda Forever is telling us. At least between the foreigners, yes, like Kyungbukgung usually is the most, of, the most popular. Some of you are mentioning that you already knew, right? I would like, if you wear hanbok, you can enter for free to the palaces, right? It's a funny way to, earn, to save some money and also to feel like a more Korean atmosphere while visiting the palace. And if you have your own handbook, you can just use it. But if you don't, uh, as I mentioned before, usually around the palaces, there are places where you can rent per hours or per day, full day, your handbook. They have different sizes for everybody. Okay, so now the last but not least Korean stamp in the top five that I would like to introduce is about Korea's beautiful beaches. There are four different. Uh, some of them, this one actually is like located in Jeju Island. The others are located in different parts of the peninsula. One of, uh, all of these places are very popular summer destinations. I'm pretty sure many of you have traveled there. But also one of these beaches is uh, very popular not only in summer, but also in winter. It is a place where many people go on January 1st to see the first sunrise of the year. It's kind of a tradition. Thousands of people gathered in this place to greet the first sunrise of the year. Do you know the name of this beach where people used to go on January 1st? This beach is located in the East Sea, Donghae in Korean. The right answer is Cheongdongjin. Cheongdongjin is dubbed as the easternmost uh, beach in Korea. And now I will pass to the second part of today's show. The second part is about Korean stamps for different occasions. So as you know, in Korea, all men, they must go to, they must serve in the military, it's mandatory. So many guys in the army, they have uh, their girlfriends outside. So usually when people was in the army, 
the most common way to communicate with the exterior world was through letters. So still now we have like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, but still many people in the army, especially lovers or the mothers, they still like to send letters. So the first step I want, the first situation I want to talk now is like, if you have a boyfriend or a, or a girlfriend, somebody you love, and you want to send a love letter, what from these stamps in here, what stamp would I recommend you to use? Like you saw before, most of the stamps are like square shaped, but not all of them are square shaped. This stamp has a heart shape. When you will actually send the letter, when you will actually paste the stamp on the envelope, you can cut with the scissors and it will become like really a heart shaped stamp. So if you are planning to send a love letter, I would like you to recommend to use this kind of Korean stamps. Here in Korea, we use the like the Asian zodiac, you know, each year there are 12 different animals and each year has one animal assigned and then after 12 years they repeat again and you will remember but for example this is from 2018 this was the year of the dog it's very cute and 2018 right and 2018 was the year of the peak and it's a very cute stamp with a pig wearing a handbook. Last year, 2020, it was the year of the red. But now, 2021 is a different year, so it's a different animal. Do you know what is the animal for 2021? 2021 is the year of an animal who usually has like two horns. <laughs> and they can be white or black or mixed. Uh, they produce the milk we use every breakfast, when we eat every morning for breakfast or when we drink coffee with milk. The, like somebody else mentioned, this is specifically the year of the white cow. So this is a white cow with uh, snow and some traditional decoration. And now, Let's go to the next occasion. So now we were talking about love letters and then after love letters, we talk about New Year's greeting letters. And now stamps for children or not only for children, but animation character stamps. And I'm pretty sure that many of you have watched animation nowadays, uh, Korean animation. Nowadays it's available in YouTube, in Netflix, in many other streaming services. In here, in Korea, we, they issued like five or more different stamps related to Korean animation. So let me show you the first one is Pororo. Pororo is very popular among Korean children and abroad. And I know, for example, in, this is streaming in many different languages, dubbed. So in Latin America, for example, there is Kororo, uh, Pororo in Spanish language, and I'm sure they have it in English and in Japanese and Chinese and many other languages. We also have Puka, like Puka stamps. Many people don't know or they, they think Puka is like Chinese or Japanese, but no, Puka is Korean animation also, originally from Korea. We have also this larva, in Korean they call lava, larva. And my one of my favorite stamps is also for character stamps is Kakao Friends. You know, Kakao is an instant messaging app here in Korea, like WhatsApp, it's very popular. And Kakao Friends, they are popular not only among kids, but also among adults. Like they have Kakao Friends store and they have everything they have anything you can imagine. So I don't really read much uh, webtoons or manhwa, but I know that there are also uh, Korean webtoon stamps and Korean online game stamps. So now let me show you in the screen first the Korean webtoon. I'm not 
really an avid reader, but I know one. I know this one is from Miseng. Miseng was a very popular webtoon. It was very special because most of the dramas are about love and romance. And I mean, that's okay. But this one was different. The main subject was not romance, was not love. So many people at that time was delighted with a new kind of drama. Before finishing, I would like to ask you, uh, from the stamps that I show you today, uh, which one is your favorite? Which one was your favorite, and why? I will be very delighted if some of you now get can get some kind of interest or excitement about stamps. Happy New Year to everybody, and as you as I said, like these stamps are issued every month, so every year we have like 20 or so. So fortunately, maybe next year, I will be able to share with you about the new issues of stamps. Bye bye. <laughs>